Hello everyone, it's John Ward with the Appalachian Channel and here is another episode of Barn Doe Life. This is my Barn Dominion behind me. Uh, I'd like to say thanks to everybody that's been uh, watching the uh, build of my Barn Dominion. The views have been great. I've been getting a lot of emails and comments and people have a lot of interest in Barn Dominiums. And I'm in process of lining up some different Barn Dominiums to go film that's already completed so you can see some that has the interiors done on them. Might be a little while before my interior is done, but I wanted to give you the backside view of it on this snowy day. It's uh, January 15th. It's about 30 degrees. It's not really too cold today, but in two days from now, it's going to go down to five degrees. Now, I have some issues living in the motorhome in the wintertime when it gets cold. Spring, summer, and fall is just absolutely wonderful to live in it. But come wintertime, I've been having tremendous problems with my water freezing up. Even when it just hits 32, 31 degrees, the water hoses freeze. And I do know they make water hoses that are heated. I looked at those online and did not order one. I put off what I <laughs> ordered one and I should have. So what I did, I went down to uh, buy a uh, heat tape that's uh, 30 foot long. And we're gonna go in here and we're gonna use some insulation and we're gonna try to get my water uh, to keep it from freezing. So I'll be able to keep some water over the next uh, week because we're gonna be in single digit uh, numbers and teens for the next week here. And I can use my reserve tanks on my water uh, uh, for water on the motorhome but you still have to fill those tanks and they still have to drain without freezing and i'm having problems with the commode not wanting to flush right uh, because it's got to go into the holding tank in the motorhome then out of that into the septic tank which is behind me here now i've got my uh, temporary power pole that you can see right here and in the corner of the building right down here on the side i have a, a dryer vent for my dryer uh, that I went ahead and cut in and I'm running in my power to my motorhome there and we're gonna go inside we got to move the motorhome up closer to the water spigot we've got to cut a water hose in half it's 50 foot long and I've only got 30 foot of heat tape we're gonna cut it and uh, fix it and try to get some water going and see how it happens to uh, work during this five degree uh, weather that's coming in the next few days so come on guys let's go inside okay so this is where my main water comes in and this is this area right here will be the utility room We've got some boxes here these will be my drains for washer dryer and uh, also there'll be a uh, several other things running out of here but uh, we're going to work on uh, this today right here it is not froze right now, but it does freeze and it is getting frozen. See that? Won't come on, barely, barely, barely. So, I've got this measured out right here. We're at 24 foot. My heat tape is still in my vehicle and we'll go get it. So, at 25 foot, what's going on here is my water goes in right here. This is for my water in. This is to flush my gray tanks. And this is my tanks. Uh, I'll drain them and they're open. And they probably should be closed because they are frozen right now. When they don't move, I don't push them. Uh, so that's not good. That water can freeze and not want to come out of the gray and the black tanks. So we have a 50 foot water hose right here that you can see and it has got to be cut to about 25 foot or i'm going to move the i'm going to move the motor home up as close as i can inside the building and hopefully in a couple of days they'll come put in the garage door and that'll be a tremendous help once i get that garage door in but i am truly thankful to be inside underneath this shed and not out here in the open so it is helping and it will get better day by day. There's Angel. Hey Angel. She's been playing in the snow today. So one of the first things I need to do is I'm going to need to pull this forward. And 
I've got this drain hose here that should move as I just pull it for and I'll keep an eye on it. So I'm going to set this up and pull this as far forward as I can. So that means I'm going to need to move a few things over here. So here is the dryer vent or where my dryer will set and I can look out the window there and see uh, the outside when I'm doing laundry. Um, but I also have my temporary pole right out there that you can see and the the line comes right in here and I've got a couple of one extension cord coming in here and I got a water hose that runs out to the back building to my utility room or to my little building back here. I've got a washing machine hooked up in there and I've been washing clothes in there but uh, not going to do that for a while now with this cold weather. So the first thing so I know how much I can cut off the water hose is I'm going to try to pull this motor home on forward here. So let me set the camera down and get in this thing and move this forward as fast as I can because we don't want any carbon dioxide getting in here and it will get in here pretty quick. So we're gonna move it forward pretty quick and hopefully we will have enough room for the water hose and be able to use the 30 foot heat tape. All right, we're not straight, we're at an angle, but hey, I'll take it. It's cold right now, and we're trying to get this water spigot within 25 foot before this is gonna go in right here. So, get, I also got some insulating tubes yesterday when I was out, and that's them right here. We're gonna wrap the water hose in these tubes so yep let's throw them out and boy would angel love to chew those wouldn't you like to have some of those to chew up boy you would go nuts so there's those are 368 a piece this was what was expensive easy heat 48.99 plus tax so this foam right here that I can reuse when I'm doing my plumbing in my building and the heat tape came to about $70 with tax so we're at the tapes right here and we come down here to 24 foot so I'm hoping we're gonna have enough heat tape to wrap around all of this and come in now I've already changed the end on this water hose at one time so this is not the right water hose it's the other water hose I've changed the end on so let me go get the other water hose these white hoses are made for These white hoses are used for water and these come in different qualities. This particular hose right here all right I've already replaced the ends on these at one time. They started leaking they did not last very long but you can always replace the ends on them by buying these replacements uh, for the male and female side they've been replaced on both sides on this one so I'm gonna go ahead and screw this one in okay good and tight and uh, so now we'll take the spray nozzle off this end thankfully it's screwed screwed off pretty easy and I've had a lot of problems with not wanting to take off my splitters. I usually have a splitter like this right here. And if you leave these on when it freezes and leave the hoses on it, it busts them. I've lost two of these, plus I've lost my hydrant pump outside 
my frost freeze hydrant pump because I did not take this off. Um, unscrew it and it froze, busted the top of my pump. Uh, and I'll show you that maybe on another video. It's too cold to go out there now. But now what I want to do is I want to find where this is about 25 foot. Water hose needs to come to about right here. And so what I'm gonna do is I got some scissors and we're gonna try to cut it. And it's not so easy to cut when it's cold. All right, cut. Now it will screw in right there. Now I need to take this end off here. Got to take this off and put it on the other side now. So generally, usually, let me get my measuring tape up before I step on it. I've had that for many years. Okay, so I'm gonna take this end off. And yes, I do need gloves on. I know there are gonna be comments. Why don't you have gloves on? I don't really have any with me handy that I know where they're at. Not, it doesn't really get that cold in Tennessee. So, you know, when I said it was 27 degrees the other day on one of the videos, it was kind of cold. Some people that live in Alaska kind of laughed at me. <laughs> Made fun of me in the comments. They said, wait till you see 40 below zero, then it's cold. And yeah, I could not live like that. But you know, down here in the south, when it gets in the 30s, it's cold. When it gets in the teens for us, it's real cold and it gets single digit, like it's going to in a couple of nights. Oh no, we, we're not used to that. And so either way, whether I can run water straight in on this, or whether I can use it for my reserve tank, I'm gonna to have to get water. This has got to not be frozen so I can get water in. There's gonna be very few days it gets above freezing. All right, so this is stuck on here pretty good. So I'm gonna have to get a knife and cut this. I'll be right back. Okay, I got a cut knife here to split this and uh, hopefully can get this off. These cost about $7 an end, depending on the quality. You can get them cheaper in plastic, but they don't generally last too long either. You know what's gonna happen here? This hose is gonna be very cold. And it's gonna be very hard to get this end on there because I can tell by the way the uh, hose is right now. I'm gonna think, if this don't go in, I'm gonna to have to take the hose in side and put it on the heater and heat this up a little bit to make this more pliable because, boy, this cold weather's really got it to where it's not working very good. Okay, I've got that out. And hey, this is something I'd, I always fix my water hoses. They always, these ends always go bad and I've fixed these like this for years and years. So this is something very common to me. So let me see if we can get this pushed down in there without heating this water hose. So I'm gonna put the collar that locks it down on first. And if this will slide in, we'll be good. No, it's hard as a rock. So we're gonna have to heat that up a little bit probably to get the slide on, but I'm gonna keep trying because I really don't have time to take it inside. You know what, it's not all the way on, but hey, it's pretty close. <laughs> And uh, we're gonna tighten it up right there. See if I can find my screwdriver. 
All right, so I'm going to tighten it back up now. And this is very possibly going to leak and I'll have to heat it to make it more pliable to fit on there just about an eighth of an inch more. But depending on where this locks down at onto the rubber hose, we might be okay. So what we're going to do first is we're going to test it. And we're going to go ahead and fill my tanks the best we can. Uh, and I'm going to show you how that works. It's very confusing at times. But I need to get as much water in my tank as I can right now. In case this does completely freeze up, I'll have some water uh, inside. So let's go back here and uh, try to get this in. Okay. So this turns and this leaks constantly and I always have to put new washers in here. So there we go. Now we're going to go over here and turn the water on. We'll get the heat tape out here in a minute but we won't get this water making sure it's not leaking real bad. Oh yeah, very tight got colder since I started on this project. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna have to go in and get a heater and bring my heater out here to unthaw this um, a little bit. I'm gonna put a little heater by. I did that the other day. I'll be right back, guys. Okay, I got a little heater here. Get some heat on this. I don't wanna put too much pressure on this. If it doesn't turn freely, it's frozen, so we're gonna let some heat get on this and uh, loosen it up. I see a little bit of water coming out here now. We've got a leak on this hose. See that, guys? <clears throat> so let me see what's going on with that. Which we want to turn it off real quick. It's not screwed on all the way. So let me set this back down a minute. We set the heater back. Oh yeah, we got some got some issues. Doesn't look like it's got a seal in it. Doesn't feel like it's with it leaking that bad. With it leaking that bad, the washer. Nope, it's got a washer in it. Gosh. So I might have to cut this one and redo it too, but I'm, I'm gonna turn the washer upside down. And I do have other washers more over there. So I go through a lot of these washers. Uh, but I think it's leaking from the backside here. Yeah, I've got something. It's not tightening up the way it's supposed to. So let's try it one more time. Okay, no leak, no leak. Okay, let's get the water. Let's get the uh, heater back over here by it for now. Okay, so. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you down here. Turn some lights on. And you can see it has if I want to run city fixtures, which means if I want to run it straight in off the water hose, that's what I want it on. Right now I'm running it on the reserve tank, which is three and five. And we look up here, we see the code three and five. Now we want to fill the tank. And so we're going to go to one and six. And I hear water running. Hear that? So we're gonna fill this tank. Let's go check and see where this tank's at and we'll be, come back to this in just a second. We're gonna go ahead and get this tank filled. So we'll have water in the tank. There's Angel. She does not sleep out here. There's Angel and she does not sleep outside. She sleeps inside with me. 
<laughs> right beside my bed or in the bed most of the time. But she stays in that when she's out here in the garage to me. So let's look right here. This tells me about my tanks. So I'm three quarter full on my interior freshwater tank. I think that's a 40 gallon tank. Uh, it shows both my gray water and my black water are on empty, but we're three quarters here. We want this to go all the way over to here to full, and we're going to know that it's full outside here when it starts overflowing. If you it gets too full, it's got some overflows and it'll overflow in it. Angel, you're going to stay inside? That's her bed in here. So she's going to stay inside for now. She says it's a little cold out here, Daddy. So now the next project is we're going to start with the heat tape right here. And we're going to heat tape this and we're going to put foam around it. So I'm going to try to set the camera up here so we can watch this going on. Heat tape, extension cord, and I'm going to run this tape all the way down to the very bottom of this. So what I'm going to do, start about right there. I put a little bit of tape around that. I think I got some tape somewhere. I'll be right back. Okay, so this won't move. I'll put a little bit of Gorilla Tape right here. Not a whole lot, because that stuff can be hard to get off. I'm going to kind of wrap this around all the way down through here. And yeah, looks like we're going to have enough. So let me get some of the foam foam insulation pipe insulation okay so I'm gonna start right here I'm gonna try to encapsulate this and I can then see I should have got the bigger a little bit bigger foam but this is gonna work I'm gonna take this plastic off it's gonna let it stick So I'm going to use a little bit of Gorilla Tape to pull it together in some places. If you live in a motorhome or have ever lived one in an RV or motorhome of any kind during the winter, leave me a comment. Actually, just leave me a comment let me know what state you're from. I know that uh, it seems like most of my views come from Tennessee since uh, I'm located here in Tennessee, but uh, we get views from all around the world, and I appreciate everybody that leaves a comment really means a lot to me uh, when I see comments. Some of them's not always nice comments, but that's all right too. Um, sometimes I get called a few things, but, uh, or this and that, but that's just part of being on YouTube. YouTube's really been good to me. Last year, 2023, uh, was my first full year on YouTube. And hey, I can't complain, we had a good year very blessed so okay I'm gonna get another piece of foam and it seems like it works best when I lay the tape into the foam and put it in the back side of the foam I've been needing to do this for some time but uh, just now in the last few days been able to get the motorhome into the garage because the building's still been under construction and uh, with it under construction I couldn't get it in here to do this type of thing but uh, now we got in under roof that is really a blessing not to have that snow not to be out here working in snow and mud right now to be inside right now working without any mud or snow so that's a real blessing so yeah this is this is coming along I think I got enough of the uh, styrofoam or 
foam insulation padding, whatever it is, I'm not for sure. Hopefully it's still filling like it's supposed to. This cold weather has created quite the challenge living in a motorhome during the winter. It's not uh, not that cold in Tennessee, but uh, just takes get below freezing to freeze your water up. I kind of thought these would go on a little bit quicker than they are, but uh, I'm kind of speeding it up probably on the camera or on the editing right now. Okay, we've got a little short piece right here. So I'm gonna get some scissors. I'm gonna push it up there as far as I can. I should be able to cut these with scissors. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so I'm gonna go up here. Let's take this heat tape and put it in here. I've got that for the sticky to stick it together, but it's not got much sticky on it. So we're getting down to the last little piece and I've got some of it here okay got a little bit too much so let me cut that again I'm taking this excess heat tape and wrapping it right around this connection right here and then I'm going to put a little bit of tape on this, and I'm going to tape this down some more here too. But just to give you a little idea, needs a little bit of tape to hold it in there, but uh, we're all the way back down to right here. I don't think I need the heater anymore, I'm going to turn that off. And my tank, my reserve tank, should be getting full here in a minute. And let's go ahead and see what it shows in here on the monitor. Something's not set right or something's froze. Should be more than that in there now. So let me go see what's going on. Everything is everything is set right, but uh, and I hear water running, but uh, I'm not for sure. And I have issues with the water pump that pumps the 12 volt water out of the tank a lot. I don't understand why it runs at times. So, three and five would be how I've been running it. Yeah, I've got issues going on here. I shouldn't be hearing water running right now. Okay. Now, that's running it off a normal, which is running it from my freshwater tank that's built in underneath the motor home. Now to fill it, we should be filling it, and that should be one and six. And I hear it, but it don't seem to be filling for some reason. So I'll come back to that in just a minute. I'm going to get some uh, power turned on. I'm going to get some power turned on this heat tape here and uh, get this heat tape taped up here. Yeah, as far as I know, water's coming through there, but uh, don't know. Something don't seem to strike right, right now. So I'm going to get some heat going on it here. Okay, so I wasn't getting water going through, but I think what happened was there was still frozen water in the water hose 
and it finally worked its way through by running. And so now let's go back to fill tank. Let's go back down here to fill tank. And that's going to be one city fill tank is one in six. So now, yeah, okay, hear that? That's water going into my reserve tank. I'll get that tank topped off. Then I'll put it back on city fixtures and run that until it freezes. Hopefully it won't freeze, I'll let you know. All right guys, this is the next day, January uh, 16th, it's a Tuesday. Uh, 2024. So if you've been watching the news and you live anywhere in the southeastern United States, you know that there's an Arctic cold front coming. We have had some snow. Now it's even going to get worse because tonight the temperature just came in from watching the Knoxville news and it's going to get down to about zero in my area tonight. That is cold for East Tennessee, I'm going to tell you. So, uh, you know, living in a motorhome is very challenging because you got a lot of different things you gotta deal with because you're not insulated like you are in a home. Uh, it's not designed to live in, in the winter because uh, there's no insulation. Now I do have gas heat that I can run and that will keep it as warm as I need it, but I cannot refill the propane without taking the vehicle out. It doesn't have a way to put propane into it without it being filled at a, a station where they sell it. And Angel's over there, she's wanting to go out and play in the snow, <laughs> and I'm going to let her out here in a few minutes and we'll film her playing in the snow here at the end of the video. But uh, yeah, I just want to talk about my uh, motorhome a minute. Uh, some of you might have some questions about that. Leave questions in the comments about the next upcoming video. Hopefully the next video will be putting this garage door up here. And I don't know, I think he's scheduled for tomorrow, but uh, it might be a couple of days from now before he gets out, I'm not for sure. So hopefully he'll get here and we'll get this garage door up and that's going to help. But uh, let me turn the camera around. I'm going to show you this Jayco just a second. So this is the uh, 2019 Jayco Greyhawk. Uh, it sells for around $140,000 new. I paid $82,500 for it plus tax. I had about $90,000. And then shortly after that, I spent about $1,200 to put a new computer on the generator. And there have been an ongoing issues, and that's just part of living in a, in a motorhome, not that it's a certain brand. But there are so many different components in a motorhome than they are in a home that you don't have to deal with. You've got a vehicle that you can live in self-contained, has a generator, it has 12 volt batteries it can run on, it has gas that can run the refrigerator, it can run the heat, uh, the propane can. The only problem is we cannot fill the propane unless we take the motorhome to the place that sells propane where they can pump it in. I can't get propane and bring it here. So I have to take it out on the road to get propane for it. But uh, yeah, um, I'm gonna be talking about the barn dominium and uh, ongoing and I've got several people I've been getting emails from, from the last few videos on my barn dominium that have already built barn dominiums and I'm gonna get to go film theirs. And uh, one guy uh, contacted me. He said they bought three, um, buildings from Troyer. Uh, they built a residence, a garage, and a hay barn, and hopefully we're gonna get to see them, and that's not very far from me. So they're gonna be upcoming uh, videos on barn dominiums and also motorhomes. So it's kind of a mixed batch of things. I'll be able to show you things that I'm going through right now and dealing with. And, uh, but uh, they, I think this is about a 33 foot motorhome, and I pretty much like living in it. The size is okay, and I've got used to that. Uh, just this cold, weather has uh, caused problems with the uh, water lines and the sewer and uh, so let me uh, get my gimbal and i'm going to show you the the water line and then we'll get ready to close this video and we're going to make it through the night it's going to be uh zero degrees at night and i'll let you know on upcoming videos how i made it through tonight so let's go over here and look at the uh, at the water line and how i've got it insulated because this is something you can do at your home if you live in a modular home, a, 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 a trailer, or an RV, or whatever, these are some things you might want to uh, do to keep your water from freezing up. Because I know there's a lot of people uh, living in a, an RV of some type, some type through the winter, and probably a lot, lot colder than what I'm dealing with. So let me know. Uh, I tell you what, let me know what state you're all watching from, and uh, let me know what the temperature is there and the day that you're watching this on. So let's go over here and look at the water line. 
Okay, I've got the bedroom slide out right now, but that generally goes in at night because there is not much insulation in here. You can see this wall here. There might be just a little bit of foam insulation behind there and cold air comes up underneath the bed. So I usually pull this in at night. Uh, here is my sewage drain. And as long as I keep open my gray water, I can run hot water through there. And that's been working fine for me, not froze up. So I come out here and can drain any excess by lifting this up of the gray water and keeps it from freezing up. It's been, that's worked. I had problems with it last night and yesterday when I uh, quit filming. I got it all straightened out. It's working fine right now, but I've not been in zero degree weather yet. So now here is the water line. This is a water hose and yeah, it's warm. What to touch? I don't know. It's leaking just a little bit and uh, I might have to tighten it up there just a little bit, but it's, uh, it's leaking just a little bit and that's kind of normal. I can see just a few drops down here by when I was just holding it. But there is a few little gaps like this right here that I didn't get to seal. I should have went, this is a three quarter inch pipe insulation. They make it in one inch, I believe. It might have been bigger, but this keeps it tighter to the uh, um, water hose, the heat tape. So it runs all the way down to here. And this is coming up out of the ground. I've still got my handle exposed. I might need to cover this handle up, but uh, I've got tape around it and the heat tape goes all the way down to here. It did not freeze last night, but zero degree weather tonight, we'll find out. So I'm gonna show you where everything comes in right now. Kind of a, like a <laughs> umbilical cord, I guess. There's a water hose going out that goes to my outbuilding in the back uh, for my washing machine that I will not be using for a long time because it's too cold. This is my main 30 amp. And then this is a 20 amp cord. I have 20 amp breakers out there. So coming in, basically all I've got hooked to the 20 amp is LED lights. I've got a lot of LED lights up in here to put some light up at night. And then I have this heater. That's all I've got hooked up in here. But there's three main things that come in to give me the ability to live in this. That's the 30 amp power. Eventually there will be 30 amp plug in on one of these poles right here uh, that I'll just be able to plug into. My sewer is already here and I can move, the, the, the motor home will set back closer to the garage door once here and installed. I'll move it back further. Uh, then we have the water coming in. We got the water, we've got the sewer, and this is a 30 amp cord. This will run two electric heaters and that's about it. Anything after that, I have to turn a heater off. I want to run a hair dryer, toaster, things like that. Coffee maker, I have to turn a heater off. I do have gas heat and it works really good, but like I was saying, I have to um, move the motor home and go fill it up. Well guys, thanks for watching another episode of Barndo Life and uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel trying to reach 100,000 subscribers and I've been adding a lot of new subs from the Barndo uh, videos. I'd like to welcome all of you that have recently subscribed and all my subscribers that's been with me for all the way back for the last year and a half when I started here. So guys, I love you all. Stay warm, stay safe, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.